not a con. My name is Mark Ansbury, and I'm the Chief Operating Officer for One Cleveland. And uh, before I jump into the entire presentation, I probably don't have to do this with this group, but uh, I'd like to do a little role playing. Imagine that you're a young, starving musical artist, and you have the opportunity to study from a master, whether he's a violin player or a piano player. Uh, imagine that you can do that every day. And it doesn't matter where you are. Imagine that you can listen to an orchestra where half of it's in New York and half of it's in San Francisco. Imagine that you can visit not only the art museum, but create a virtual tour and, and walk through that tour and work with people from other segments of the country that annotate, deliberate, and communicate the value and the creation of that art and where it came from. And imagine the opportunity to be able to do this from everywhere. Now, you guys, coming from a technology band, understand this, right? You, 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 you already envision this world. But the hard part of envisioning the world is the practical application of the technology and the ubiquitous deployment of technology to enable those things to happen, not only at major universities, not only at major institutions, but to happen in smaller communities. And the whole objective of One Cleveland is the concept of creating community networking. Being able to facilitate from a ground up collaboration, sharing of resources, be able to expand capacity so that bandwidth is no longer a barrier to facilitating innovative applications and services, to open the doors to high definition television, whether it's in your home or whether it's in the classroom or it's in your office. Uh, the ability to provide uh, broadband communication so that you could actually have a live orchestra play in the classroom from hundreds or thousands of miles away. So One Cleveland, <coughs> which is the brainchild of Lev Gonick, who is the CIO over at Case Western, was a concept to bring the community together to collaborate and share and develop the infrastructure that would enable, enable the opportunities, enable the technology enable us to stop thinking about the barriers of telecommunications but open up our minds to enabling and transforming the community. So that's what I'm going to spend a little time telling you about what we're trying to do, what we're trying to accomplish as a community infrastructure, what we're trying to evolve here in Greater Cleveland which is expanding even beyond the reach of Cleveland. <coughs> um, one Cleveland, just a little background here, we're a nonprofit organization. Um, our whole focus is on developing uh, community-based services, on creating opportunities to enable collaboration, innovation, and to basically expand the opportunity to give the, uh, the members of our service the ability to think outside the box and to actually uh, implement and deploy applications that you can only dream about. We're looking at the next uh, generation of digital infrastructure that serves, hopefully, as a competitive advantage as well, because one of the opportunities, once you can get creative, is you create an economic development model for the community, you create an attractor for the community. You create opportunities to do business in ways that you never thought you could before. So there's a big advantage to the region by developing and deploying this kind of service infrastructure. We can optimize, and, and there's really a, a value proposition here when we say optimize. Uh, is that there are tremendous treasures in our community and, and a lot of us don't even know they exist. We have one of the top museums in the country on par with the Guggenheim and a lot of people don't even know we have that museum and that it sits in our backyard. Uh, we have some of the top musicians, top orchestra recognized outside of our community but we don't even take advantage of that and leverage that opportunity within our community. We have these tremendous assets and resources that we're not leveraging, that we're not using within our own community. So we have NASA in the backyard who does some very interesting uh, you know, educational outreach. But we're not leveraging it in our own community. We're not taking advantage of these assets. The other part of that is, is we're not, not only are we not taking advantage, we're not recognizing the aggregation, what the value proposition by bringing those assets together in a way they can collaborate and share and utilize those resources in very innovative and new ways. 
And whether that's the museum, whether it's the higher education research, whether it's the uh, healthcare system, there's, there's a lot of interesting technology information that's available that could be used in very creative ways that's locked away in someone's vault. And the opportunity here that we have is to create and bridge the gap between these types of institutions so we can share and collaborate and use information more effectively and create innovative uh, applications. <clears throat> our goal in our community is to accelerate the adoption of technology. We want it to move faster. I mean, we're all sitting here, hey, who wants wireless everywhere? Who wants, you know, the ability to get broadband no matter where you're, you're at? And we all want that kind of thing, but how does it happen? How does it get there? And we see it in the hot spots. You see it in the coffee shop. You see it in the hotel. Uh, you know, but you don't see it in a lot of places where people really can, you know, use, really see an opportunity to change the paradigm by which they operate. You know, we're forced to go within traditional confines of buildings, and we're forced to go in conventional refined, uh, uh, confines of, you know, your corporations or your home to get that kind of access. So, oops, sorry about that, guys. Um, so anyway, our, our real goal in what we believe is, is very imperative in our community is we have to reinvent the community. We have to change the way we work. We have to look at this as a knowledge economy. We have to change that paradigm. So we, we've really created a model that we think is really a, a three-phased approach to doing this. One is to connect. We have to connect the community. We have to take down the barriers of high-cost broadband technology. We have to take that out of the equation. We have to open the doors to bandwidth and capacities as people are no longer worried about getting access to those resources. They're now thinking about the innovative things they can do with those resources. We have to look at the opportunity to enable the community. The community, by and large, is not really understand what's out there. They don't know what some of you guys know about the technology and how you can integrate and incorporate that and change the paradigm. We have to enable that community. We have to bring the technology and the opportunities together with the people that you know think in very traditional ways, very linear, very vertical ways, and, and break down those barriers for them. We have to marry them with technology. We have to marry them with innovators. We have to marry them with applications. We have to give them the ability to envision the opportunity so that we can take the next step and really look at transforming the way the community works and the way we do business. So we look at this, we've got to connect. We begin the enablement process and we begin to transform our community. And that is the goal of One Cleveland, is to help be a catalyst, a facilitator, an engager. And that's really kind of an important part there, an engager. Engaging people to talk to other people like you guys are doing. I mean, you guys are bringing people from all over to talk, to communicate, to share, to collaborate. We've got to get our own communities to be able to do this kind of stuff. To get the neighbor next door to talk to, you know, and get the hospital at uh, one end of the city to talk to the hospital at the other end of the city. To get the hospitals to communicate with the education and research departments. We've got to break down some of our own internal barriers in order to facilitate innovation and creation. So what we have, um, and to give you some idea, one of the things that Lev Gonick did uh, in the early days of Case Western is identified the, uh, the opportunities about three years ago of fiber that existed in our region. And what happened, of course, in the uh, late 90s, uh, you know, everybody started building fiber. Cleveland was actually at the crux of a lot of fiber. We had fiber coming down from the northern routes from Chicago and going to the Midwest, and we, were, we became an intersection point. So we had a lot of fiber that was built out that was unused, untapped, and we had companies that were sitting there with this rich asset and didn't know what to do with it. So we were very opportunistic. Uh, we went to these companies and we said, hey, can you make some of this available? We'll help you create a, a opportunity. We'll create an economic model that works for you, and we'll create demand in the community for broadband services. Because as everybody you guys know in dealing with common carriers, they don't build out until there's an ROI, until they can make some money by doing that. And some of the problem there is we live at a, at a time where the economy is very bad in, in the greater Cleveland area. Jobs are being lost, and it's not just Cleveland, it's everywhere, but Cleveland is extremely depressed and is at the bottom of most lists when you look at other cities. So we saw the uh, ability to use this fiber as a lever 
as a catalyst to develop new tools, new applications, new businesses to become an economic development uh, catalyst for the community. So what we did is, you see the red here, these are fiber rings that are around the greater Cleveland area. And then what you see in green is some other fiber that we're working on getting donated to the community. And we are creating a regional network. And what we're doing is we're creating this based on community applications and community participation. We're getting participation from the higher ed. We're getting participation from the healthcare institutes. We're getting participation from school districts, from nonprofits, from city, from municipal governments, from the county to participate in the development and the deployment of what we call ultra broadband capabilities uh, in our region. So we really are, believe it or not, one of the first community networks to really take advantage of this as a community-driven event rather than as a departmental event. It's not one silo, it's the community coming together to create this service and to be able to share and collaborate in the use of this service. And that's, that's really a paradigm shift too because what we're saying in that process is we're bringing a lot of resources from a lot of institutions together which traditionally haven't communicated with each other to develop, deploy, and utilize these broadband services. So in even an expansion model, we're moving into now a, a more of a regional model. And this just to give you an idea, Cuyahoga County, which is right in the center, there are about 1,400 nonprofits at schools, hospitals, city seats, county government, et cetera, locations in just the Cuyahoga County, just mapping those out. There are a lot of institutions that can benefit from the use of broadband services that could benefit from the opportunity to create new applications that serve the community. Um, and we've been pulled into most recently moving down into Summit County and Akron Canton and in the Youngstown and that's where you see the green fiber come into place because now it's allowing us to span the ultra broadband capability out into those communities. And in the process, what we've been doing is developing relationships with folks like Adelphia and Time Warner to facilitate broadband extensions off of our fiber so that we really can create a more ubiquitous reach out to the community, uh, out to the regions that don't have access to the kind of fiber assets that we have in the greater Cleveland area. <clears throat> the other aspect of this kind of what I call community networking in the regional expansion model is we have the ability to connect with other resources. So things like the National Lambda Rail. Um, the National Lambda Rail architecture is, is basically fiber infrastructure that's shared by leading research institutions throughout the uh, U.S. Uh, there's about 26 institutions, I believe, that are participating in this network. We, Cleveland, are a member of that, and we are participating on that National Lambda Rail. And those of you that might be familiar with Internet 2, uh, you know, the research network that's largely used by higher ed and, and a lot of medical research institutions. This is a evolution of that and in fact the members of Internet 2 are participating in the expansion of the National Lambda Rail to create the next generation of digital architecture so that we can do more innovative things uh, across the nation. So, um, so this is one of the opportunities we get by aggregating resources within our region and our community. By interconnecting then with national and, and other resources, we're creating a gateway. We're creating an opportunity for the, the greater Cleveland area and this community to take advantage of a much broader digital infrastructure. And our real focus uh, as an organization is to uh, target health care, education, research, e-government, and nonprofits. What we're trying to do here is look at these as individual vertical markets, but we're looking at points of intersection between those markets. We're looking at ways that we can create collaboration and sharing of resources and connecting these institutions at gigahertz plus, you know, kinds of speeds, be able to um, really expand their ability to uh, develop innovative multimedia interactive applications and services that benefit the community. Um, and uh, uh, right now we have participation from all of these communities and we have about 18 major subscribers in our region and are expanding very rapidly uh, throughout our community. 
and we're connecting non-traditional types of organizations. We're connecting the museums, uh, the institutions.